appreciate everybody getting up early and coming to church. We really had to get up early. But I tell you what, I'd, I'd rather be here as anywhere I know this morning. And I just appreciate the good graces of God. We do have a celebration for something. Amen. Uh, this is important. This this day is very important. Without uh, without this day, uh, Christmas would be you know just another day. Uh, but I'm thankful for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace to us. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us, Lord, for the many blessings, God, that you've bestowed upon this a group of people this morning. And God, upon our own lives, God, we're so grateful to you. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary, Lord, that we might be saved. And Lord, we thank you for the resurrection. And Father, I pray right now, God, you'd help us around the Word of God a little bit this morning. And Father, I pray that as we celebrate, God, this Easter sunrise service, and God, this day, God, help us to remember exactly, Father, what you have done for us in Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, I'll read a couple of verses here, and then I'm going to read a, a couple of verses over in the book of uh, Luke chapter number 24. And and we find these words in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number <coughs> 15, we read this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved. How? We're saved by what? The gospel. Amen. Uh, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Christ died. We know that. We believe that. Uh, because of the Word of God, not just because someone told me so, not just because it's an historical fact, but because of the Word of God, I believe that Jesus died for me according to the Scriptures. But not only that, my friend, in verse number 4, and that He was buried and that He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. My friend, I want to give you just three things this morning real quickly about the proof of the resurrection. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. There was others that were, but I wasn't there. You weren't there 2,000 years ago. But do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Say amen. amen. Do you believe that he was placed in a tomb? Say amen. amen. And do you believe that he arose from the dead? Say amen. 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 I believe, friend. And I believe according to the scriptures by the word of God that Jesus arose from the dead. Now the, 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 the naysayers today would wonder why in the world would a bunch of people gather in a cemetery uh, so early on a Sunday morning, which most people spend sleeping late, but why would we gather around and, and discuss the resurrection of Christ, friend? Because it is what makes a difference in the gospel plan. It is what makes all the difference in what completes the gospel plan. I preached to you last Sunday about the cross and Christ steps to the cross and how that he hung and died. Hallelujah on the cross of Calvary. And for that I am grateful. Amen. Why? Because he paid my sin debt. Y'all are going to get two messages in one this morning. I'm already starting on my Sunday morning service. Amen. <laughs> uh, but, but listen, he died on the cross of Calvary. Paid my sin debt. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for me that I might have righteousness through him. And I'm glad that he paid my sin debt. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. My sins are many. My sins were many. My sins were great. So were yours. Well, we're a small number of people gathered this morning, and we, we realize our sins. And you think about that and the sins of the whole world and how that Jesus died for your sins. Amen. How that he bore my sin and became sin for me. Yes, friend, we believe in the gospel. Yes, we believe in the death of, of Christ on the cross of Calvary. But I know one thing, friend, I'm, I'm certain for sure that he arose from the grave. See, that's that was his saying amen to the death on the cross. That, if he'd been the only one, uh, you know, if he'd have died for our sins uh, and, and that was all it was to it, we wouldn't have salvation. I would have no reason to stand before you today. But because of the resurrection, we know that he is our Savior. In uh, Luke chapter 24, verse number 1, 
Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body. Amen. Found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. Thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen. The truth of the word of God is not only that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and that he lived a sinless life and that he died on the cross of Calvary, but the completion of the gospel story is that he arose from the dead. Three proofs right now. Number one, we have the proof of, of the empty tomb. They were there. They saw it. I've, I've went in that tomb, and I've looked there, and I've saw the empty tomb. And friend, 2,000 years later, they've never found a scrap of evidence that anybody ever lay in that barred tomb. Nobody has ever been. Why? Because Jesus was only there for a short time. And then what? He resurrected himself. So we have have the evidence we have the proof of the empty tomb he was placed there uh, as at the day when joseph placed him there but mary came and what did she see she saw an empty tomb others came and what did they see they saw an empty tomb peter came an impulsive peter came and john came and as john came along and peter beside him uh, peter got in a hurry and he outran john ran right in there and looked and said well he's not here no he's not there why because he is risen we have the proof of the empty tomb that tells us that jesus is resurrected from the dead and friend just as surely as the sun is rising this morning two thousand years ago thank god the sun arose and he arose how victorious over what death hell in the grave when he came from when he came out of the out of the tomb he had done done the business that he went to do he uh, led captivity he led them out of there took paradise with him and got the keys of death and hell from the devil amen and now he controls all we have the empty tomb as proof of the resurrection then we have his presence in us. I feel the Spirit of God this morning. Amen. I feel, how in the world, somebody said, how in the world can you get up and you go preach at 7 o'clock in the morning? I want to tell you something. This old body didn't want to do that today. I'll tell you, this old body had rather laid in the bed and sleep. Everybody say amen. amen. But I'm so glad, thank God, that it's not me, it's not the flesh, but it's the Spirit of God that I feel as the presence on, on the inside of me today that lets me know that He is a risen Lord. Now you go back in time, all the leaders of all the uh, uh, religions around the world, you go what? You go find their tomb. What, what good is that if you can find the tomb and, and find the remains of someone that led a great religion, so to speak. But you go, thank God, to the tomb, you won't find Jesus because he's not there. He is the one, friend, whom we worship today. I, find, I know that by the presence that is in me. And then last of all, I have not only the proof of the, of, of the empty tomb, I not, not only have the proof of the Spirit of God that lives within me, but I have the proof of this i have the proof of the word of god jesus said it he said I, you, he said uh, uh in three days i'll raise this temple he said you put it in the ground you kill it or you destroy it and in three days i will raise it up guess what he predicted his own resurrection he prophesied of his own resurrection guess what he did three days later he resurrected himself what does that prove that proves that he is god not only was he fully man, but he is fully God. And what that tells us, friend, is that the Scripture proves, as Paul said about the resurrection that we read to you. And he also said that if he had not risen from the dead, then my preaching would be in vain. All of this would be in vain today had Christ not raised himself from the dead. But hallelujah, he arose. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I thank you for the good touch of the spirit of God. I pray now that you bless us and help us. God, as we go to, to have fellowship around food, I pray that you bless it and use it, Lord, for the nourishment of our bodies. But God, most of all, we're thankful and we praise you uh, for the opportunity, God, to worship you on this Resurrection Sunday. Help us now today to put you first <coughs> and to remember that you died for us and that you rose again 
God, let us remember that not only today, but every day of our lives as we serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody got anything? I know that's quick, but everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. Let's go eat breakfast. Amen.